right, we should be on. Hopefully this works fine, because I've been having a couple issues with the recording this, but well, the long overdue any percent tutorial is here. Um, so yeah, let's get into explaining a couple things. Uh, we'll probably go to Alaska for this, because we need to explain a couple uh, movement techniques before we uh, get into the actual run. So, yep, let's do that. So, there's two main movement techniques, and that's grounded glide boosting and mid-air glide boosting. Um, both are very good in terms of getting places, and sometimes they are required, so we must learn them. So, so this is the grounded glide boost. So normally, for context, also there's some enemies around. Normally for context, I'll, uh, the glider minicon does not allow you to use the high gear, which is the red dash minicon. Does not allow you to use it while you're in midair. I'll demonstrate this. I'm pressing L2 right now and it doesn't let me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a little exploit on the ground to carry a, a momentum of a dash into the glide and allows us to gain a ton of height. So we'll get on the ground here, hopefully these enemies will be a bit kind to us while I try to show an example. So let's... okay, never mind, they're not going to be kind to me. Um, so let's leave. Okay, that didn't work. Well, that was a bad example. Um, Okay, so, basically, yeah, okay, if you press, if you do, like, a neutral jump, like, you press L1 or whatever, and then you, um, are, like, on the ground, you jump up, and then you hold your, obviously, obviously, the dash minicon, if I'm holding, like, left, it's dash left, like, simple, so, if I jump, and then hold forwards, and then dash, and then glide, then it, it will actually carry if you do it um, at a good time because you need you do need to time it right. It's a bit finicky, like that. If you do it right, you can carry some of that dash momentum into the glide. And look how much height I just gained. And it's a very useful movement tech. But there is a way to glide boost in midair, which is appropriately named midair glide boosting that I'll show now. Another thing to mention about the dash minicon is that it only charges while you're standing on the ground. So let's start a glide, and then I'm going to do it, and then I'll explain what happened. Okay, so what happened there? Uh, a transform happened somewhere in there. Hope you noticed. It was, um, yeah, so basically, what are we doing? First, I need to explain a glitch called Infinite Glide Up. So if you start gliding, and then you go up, and then you transform, and then glide immediately afterwards like this, um, you'll start to slowly gain height because what happens is you you angle upwards so that your glider will almost automatically retract because it does that and then once You are up there you tr quickly transform and then press L1 to start gliding again immediately afterwards and then that will reset your position So it will reset you to be like level with the ground sort of if I explain that correctly like it, it, it will reset you to be at this position instead of um, it'll, yeah, it will reset you to be at that position instead of, um, like, instead of, um, angling upwards. So, you can gain infinite height doing that. Uh, I'll just go back up to the cliff right now. Oh, never mind. Um, so yeah. Uh, so that will allow you to get infinite height. We're basically combining a glide boost with a, um with infinite glide up basically because what we're doing is you got l1 and then like you got oh sorry you've got triangle and then l1 but what we're doing is pressing triangle then l2 then l1 because while you're transformed the dash minicon is allowed to be used so this is infinite glide up basically in action and also another thing when i'm actually doing the glide up i'm making my control stick go neutral i'm letting go like, I'm not holding down the whole time, otherwise it will reset like that, and you won't end up gaining height. So what I'm doing is I'm letting go of my control stick and then holding back down again. Oh, that reset me. 
Alright, uh, and there's one more trick I need to explain. And getting up on the cliff face would be really nice in terms of doing that. Um, if I could. I don't think we're going to gain enough height. So let's just drop down and... Alright. So yeah, infinite glide up is usually just really slow, so it isn't really used specifically in the run. But if you don't think you're going to make it, you can do a couple good glide ups, and if you do it well, then you should end up gaining a lot of total height overall. Um, and if and eventually, like, you can do it enough, and then you'll just gain infinite height. Alright, let's explain one more technique, which is used all over the run, and should probably be learnt in general. But it is used in specific places. And that's called a uh, jump transform glitch. So this glitch allows you to gain enough height. Okay, this failed badly. Let's quit the game and go to... Oh, no, let's just go back to Autobot HQ and I'll show you in a uh, convenient spot. If you're... Um... Yeah, let's just let these heavy units take us, take us away. Oh, literally take us away, okay. <laughs> um, can we damage boost off a heavy unit? I wonder. Nah, not really. That would've been fun. Alright. Wait till the missile charges up. Okay, so... Jump transforming basically allows you to gain enough upwards momentum, or like enough height, without any minicons, that... And it allows you to gain enough height to clear ledges that you would normally most ledges that you would normally need high jump to do so um so let's show that off down in amazon and down in the, the basin there we go right so jump transforming yeah gain the height that you would normally need high jump to gain without any minicons so it's great we can do a bunch of different glitches and stuff with that Bunch of, a couple little sequence breaks, sort of, even. Like, getting minicons that no, you'd normally... Or, there's one minicon that needs high jump in the game. Like, absolutely needs it. Except you don't, because you can get it with the jump transform. So, I'll show it off on this ledge. So, as you can see here, this ledge is way too high for us to jump up. There is absolutely no way. Um, but what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do the jump transform glitch, and there we go, we're up. Okay, what just happened? So... First of all, I'm, just as a side, I'm always holding forwards towards this wall, like I'll just show you, like I'm always holding the forwards direction, as you can see by Hotshot just walking forward idly. Like I'm always holding forward going to the wall to try and maximize my ver my horizontal distance over. Alright, so what is, okay that didn't work, I actually didn't get it then. What is happening there? Why is suddenly, if I just jump like that and then I go back down like normal, but suddenly, when I drop a little bit, suddenly I'm getting height. Uh, so, it's pretty lenient, but you basically want to j transform as on your descent. You can't do it at the peak of the jump, unfortunately. But, like, right there on the descent, you can actually go a bit earlier, probably, and you gain a little bit of extra height. And that's basically... And look, if I'm holding forward, like, I, I can carry the walking speed into the transform so I can so that's what allows you to climb up ledges so you can do it it's directional so you can do it in any direction though doing it left and right doesn't really have a purpose also that's another thing untransform jumping you can gain you can skip like like say if I go like this like it's a little movement tech you can use in some specific places uh, say if I go like this, that's much faster than, uh, say, if I if I do it normally, where I transform. Oh, uh, can I go forward? Uh, untransform and then jump up. Like, that was lucky that I got up, but it does provide a bit more jump momentum. So you're more likely to clear difficult ledges like this rock, for example. Um, so yeah, that's... Okay, I failed that. Wow. Um, that's... Okay, I'm clearly mistiming this today. That is not very good. Yeah, and sometimes, if you clip off the rock, the game will still reset your position if you untransform as fast as possible. So then you can realign and start driving. Alright, that's about it for the basics. 
and also maximizing use of the dash minicon, understanding the physics of it, it's going to be really useful. So let's get into the full the full tutorial on how to speedrun this game, the current best route. So just as an aside, you can see this file has 30 minicons, this file also has 30 minicons. You need 30 to beat the game, because on the easiest difficulty recruit mode, you need to have... 30 minicons to beat the game. Veterans 35 and Commanders 40. Any percent is always run on recruit mode unless you're crazy uh, and want to run veteran. Commander, I'm pretty sure, is just outright illegal because there's too many changes. But um, yeah, run it on. So we're going to start a new file on recruit. Timing doesn't start then. And also, I have my splits up just to show you an example. I cleared the times. We'll just show an example of how long each thing takes, like when to start time, when to split. If you want to know, because I really want to get standards down for that, because I'm sick of people splitting at different times in different games. It's really annoying. Um, all right, first thing we're gonna do is switch to Hotshot. He's faster, obviously. Like if you just look at the Autobot stats here, get some stat menus up. You can see Hotshot has a very high speed, um, the lowest power level, and the lowest attack and defense combined. You see, Red Alert is probably the best Autobot in the game because he has very good speed. He's got maximum defense, and he's got very good attack, and he's got the lowest power level again. Optimus has the highest power level of 5. It only, it's only 4 or 5. He has very good defense, but he's very clunky in terms of his hitbox, and his speed is very low, so we never actually use Optimus in this run. We only use Hotshot and now Red Alert, because Red Alert is actually better for some levels. Uh, so, if we go to controller settings, I hate my inverted y-axis, so we're gonna turn that off. Recon on R3 button. Oh, didn't know that was a thing. Alright, I hate my inverted y-axis, so we're gonna turn that off. That's the main reason why we start timing. So we go, drop zone, Amazon, and then the warp gate is where we start timing. 3, 2, 1, bang, there we go. Alright. So obviously I'm gonna stop to explain stuff, so I'll never, like, gold split or anything stupid like that. And if I'm struggling to do something, because there are some difficult things in this game, uh, then I'll have to shove a cheat code on, just to make my life easier. So, spam X, skip the cutscenes, and now we're here. First thing we're going to do, turn backwards, because we're going to do the car jump example I showed you earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, use the untransformed momentum, that did not work. This is going great to start off with. Uh, we're going to come over here, and we're going to car jump up here. Just with car jumps, I forgot to explain that you should probably, and with the glide boosting as well, practice the timings, practice everything. Alright, so we're just going to have a leisurely stroll through the forest. I like to go up this hill to the left of this tree right here. Left of um, this, these two trees that are really close together for some reason. Uh, so then we untransform off the top of this hill, because it gain a bit of momentum and then just keep driving. You keep driving down the mountain, untransform, hold back so that you don't end up going into the river, because that would be bad. Um, make sure you get to the, like, the edge of the river, um, and like go between these two trees maybe, I don't know, it's mostly just intuitive. But just get to the edge of the river mainly, that's like the main part of it. Go up this hill, uh, drive off this, it's kind of a sudden drop off point, there we go. Uh, there's some enemies up here, just try to take as little damage as possible. I've already taken a bit of fall damage because I'm being an idiot. That was really unlucky, goddamn. They were right in my line of driving. Uh, go around the left here. Oh, by the way, I should probably show you. We are at the... We're past the temple now, we just skipped that. So we skipped the lock on, the pressure point if you want to get that, and the safeguard. So now we're on the path to the mountain ruin. Uh, but we're not going to go there, we're going to keep going straight. And, uh, just use some more momentum off this island. And now we've got, um, kind of a 50-50 trick. It's a bit difficult. We're, uh, it's called Firefight Early. So, we're going to align ourselves about here. We're going to drive through the forest. Hopefully not hit any invisible collision or any trees. And we're going to drive up this wall right here. And that was pretty unlucky. We hit a rogue piece of collision. That was pretty unlucky, so that was not a good example. Um, okay, these enemies are annoying me. Uh, if you fail it, go back to about this tree right here. I'll realign yourself because it's much easier when you're closer. Um, and just drive up, hold left and forward, like hold up left as you go up that hill. 
and just keep driving until you reach the top and then untransform. If you keep stay transformed, you'd fail that. Uh, make sure you don't fall off the sledge by untransforming over it. Redrive to the firefights. Okay, that's firefight early. So the drive up the wall, you can get that first try pretty easily. The warnings about that. There is some. While well, we just cards, listen to this beautiful cutscene right here, Every mini um, you allows you to access extra functions. there are extra some invisible collisions just in the ground that you can bonk on right before um, driving up the wall. And I'd recommend kind of if you if you, if you see the wall as like a circular corner almost, drive up that and kind of hold left towards it and up to. Um, push yourself up the wall almost with the control stick like w just will it to happen I guess that's my best way of explaining it uh, we're gonna go to the left here because this island actually does connect to the island that we jumped off to get here on the mountain ruin path but this forest is pretty thick so uh, be careful also if you're watching this video just for kicks then hi if you're watching this video to actually learn stuff then hi uh, as you can see this, this island does connect over here, which is something I didn't know until recently, because I'm an idiot. Um, so let's go through here. Untransform about here, just so, so you don't, like, actually hit any trees. Because if you're untransforming in that animation, that you won't actually, like, you won't ragdoll off bouncing into the trees. Another thing about Firefight is that it's very spammable. So, like, you can just spam it and kill enemies. I'm pretty low on health right now. Untransform over this. And if you do it at the exact right time, you should get over it's kind of difficult though. Untransform right there because it's very easy to overshoot this if you don't. You can go, probably go a bit more forward. But we're going to grab the Claymore. Like I said before, we need 30 Minicons to beat the game. And, uh... Yeah. So, this one, we're not going to equip because it lags the game a bit. And it wastes time. Alright, so now we're going to, uh... We're going to skip all this and going around there, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we're gonna come up here, hopefully not take too much damage from these stupid medium grunts. Align yourself wherever you really want to, and untransform. And that's called untransform momentum jumping, or whatever you want to call it. Um, or like an untransform jump, or a momentum jump. Um, how does that work? So, when you're untransforming in that animation, not only do you not ragdoll off of hitting objects, but you also, we're going to equip that, but I'm just going to explain this for a second. Um, yeah, when you're untransforming, not only do you not uh, ragdoll off objects, but you also um, carry all the previous momentum that you had. And basically what I'm doing there is I'm going down that mountain and once I'm hitting all that slope, and once I'm hitting the end of it, I'm untransforming and I'm taking that momentum and I'm able to jump over there and if you're lucky you won't take or if you're like not me you won't take full damage there like an idiot um and i miss so that's bad um you can die i'm just gonna end up killing all these enemies but yes get grab the deflector equip it it's the best minicon in the game by far um nothing will ever change my opinion on that it's also the it's not only is the best minicon it's the best minicon for like a playthrough like, hands down. Like, literally negate all damage for the first, like, three levels. Let's go. Just drive across here. Oh, yeah, I'll show you a little pro strat that you can do if you want. We'll go back down here. You can come up through between these trees and just kind of walk up this. Jump here. Transform. And drive across. You'll have a little bit less momentum, so it'll be a bit tight. I recommend trans untransforming at the end. Kind of just get used to untransforming over gaps. Like, Amazon's, like, designed so that you practice this. There's no other level that's really inducive to driving. But just practice, like, the transforming and untransforming tech as you're trying to gain momentum. Um, here's Spider Tank. If you're low on health, kill him. And if you're not, then if you want to be a pro, then just... Uh, roll with it, roll with him there while the heavy unit fight, because one thing I don't like about this game, when you enter boss fights, they don't despawn the enemies. Anyway, we equip the flashbang, see how the game lags for a second there, and I didn't draw attention to it with the deflector, but that's why we don't bother equipping the claymore, because why would we? Also, 
uh, your fully charged firefight shots can still um, go off the edge of the spider tank. Like, they can still... Um, what does that mean? His legs act as shields, so you won't actually hit him. You need to hit the middle of him to kill him fast. Anyway, yes, this is a car jump, so you can't actually walk on this texture, this little collision bit. And then this is probably the third hardest car jump in the game, probably, I'd say. It's a little, it just skips a little bit of walking around there. It doesn't save that much time. Grab the Mountain Ruin Warp Gate, never forget that. Um, he'll play a little cutscene, but it's it's not unskippable like the um, like the, the first Minicon cutscene, for example. Or the first Articon, whatever. Um, Alright, heavy unit, quick kill. Uh, okay. Charge up fire, fully charged firefight shots. Take advantage of him taking ages to come down. Use deflector to block his normal shots. If you charge up a full firefight shot, or a decent enough shot, he'll, um, start up for a second. Also, if he opens his shoulders, I have to... Okay, I need to slow down. I'm so sorry. I, need, I, I was just explaining stuff fast because... Okay. The main damage you're gonna do to him is charging up full firefight shots. When he opens his um, shoulders to do a missile blast, you have a couple seconds to shoot him with a flashbang, where you can hold R1 to keep charging your flash, your not your flashbang, your firefight, while you press R2 to um, fire your flashbang. I'll show you an example of that. So if I start charging, I can still fire at him with R2, and I'm still charging up my shot. And basically, you'll see, see that animation right there. He um, gets interrupted, so you can. You can charge up full shots with the R1 to do his maximum damage, and then you can press R2 and fire the flashbang to interrupt his missile cycles, and therefore minimize the damage that you're taking, and also interrupt his movement. Another way to interrupt his missile cycles is to get him to do a stamp, just jump as he does it. It also gives you a bit more time to charge up shots. Awesome. Oh. And as you can see, he does a lot of damage if you let him, so just be very careful. But yeah, that's heavy unit quick kill. You should be done with him in like 30 seconds. Uh, spam X to skip this cutscene. My button stopped working for a second. That's nice. Very promising. Alright, cool. I'll try and pause the game. I'll remember that pausing exists so I can explain stuff. Uh, just spam. We're not gonna do any, uh, Minicon re-equipping, since we only have four. The Claymore is absolutely trash. Oh yeah, split. Uh, the heavy unit blows up, like it has a blowing up animation, unlike the rest of the Deceptor clones bosses. Um, he has a little blowing up animation, uh, and as the fade out goes to black, uh, split. Or you can split as the loading screen appears, that's probably better actually. After each boss, just split as the loading screen shows up, like after you've skipped all the cutscenes. Although, I like splitting on the fade out, I don't know. Anyway, this level contains the most annoying creatures in the game. Spy Eyes. At least that's what I call them. I don't know the actual name. Um, so Spy Eyes suck because they call enemies and they're just bad in general. So what we want to do is because we want to spam them because we can't spam shoot them. Because they don't actually die in one quick fire firefight shot, unfortunately. The pesky rat. But luckily, if they notice you, they stop in place for a couple seconds. So if you take time to aim, then they will, um, they'll be nice to you. And if you don't take time to aim, then they'll probably run away, because they're dumb. So make sure you do multiple shots, because one just spam shot of firefight does not kill them. Okay, this is the second hardest car jump in the game. Uh, that's two difficult ones in quick succession. Sorry about that. Just kind of how the route went. Um, so we're gonna jump on this little thing right here, and we're gonna get uh, the whatever this thing's called, the shock punch or whatever. We're gonna grab it early, and that's the car jump. Um, so I'd call that the second hardest in the game because it's a bit finicky to get, mostly because of the uh, the surface of that ice rock. And the surface is mostly like that because you're meant to jump from here, I'm pretty sure, casually. Although, I don't even remember how to do it casually. Uh, drive here. Untransform momentum, that did not work. Car jump up this. It's a very easy iceberg to car jump onto. Try and make this jump. If you don't make it, then just try that whole sequence again. This guy's really hard to kill. So he'll just annoy you for a while. Just don't worry about it. Because you're just going to drive past all the spy eyes in a second. 
grab this minicon. It's another minicon we don't use. The, uh, the, uh, Hawkeye. I'm glad I slightly remember all the names of these. Yeah, just, spires are annoying. Just leave them alone, I guess. Um, okay, we're gonna go to the right here. With the crevice field. Uh, always ignore Optimus when he's trying to talk to you because he's a piece of crap. Uh, get some untransformed jumping up there. Uh, just do a couple jumps because this is a kind of tight surface. Go around here, turn. I'm trying to talk you through my normal movement strategies because they're pretty... Like, it's not like all the movements optimized fully, like some games, because this game is very... Like, it's not movement-based, per se. Like, it wasn't designed with movement particularly in mind. So, it's kind of hard to say what the best strat is. Like, there isn't a best strat. Also, we're having some sound glitches right there. Uh, send him back to HQ. That probably shouldn't happen on your PS2. Happens on mine. Maybe I should smack it with a hammer so that it comes to its senses. Trans untransform there to avoid falling down the crevice. Um, also, untransform here to avoid falling down this actual crevice. Uh, and aim for the icebreaker, by the way. Because that's where we're going. You should really be on the right of that patrol. I don't know why I'm on the left. I'm on a really bad angle here. But anyway, we're going to untransform momentum. Jump onto the icebreaker and grab the sniper rifle. The lookout. Which is another minicon we don't use. But don't worry, we're going to use some of the minicons we get in the uh, research center. So that's all the minicons. Now let's drive to the research center. We just love skipping the whole game. Let's go. Alright, spider tank, this guy can be really annoying, just kind of get past him as fast as possible, because <laughs> he sucks. Uh, grab this warp gate, because you might die, and that would be bad. I don't think I've ever died here, but, you know, it's possible. Uh, aggro this guy, uh, these guys will aggro as well, usually, uh, shoot them. Just get him done. The spy eyes will be really angry with you, but who cares? Um, we're gonna fight. We're gonna fight Starscream with a ton of enemies around us, by the way. So be ready for that, because we can't bother killing them all. Like, why would we do that? All right, perfection. All right, the first minicon. We're gonna get grab all the minicons here. So first minicon is in this house. Oopsies, I missed. Okay, it just decided not to, so yeah, sure. Missiles are cool. Also, use the deflector, because it's useful. Stop punching that hotshot. Hotshot's an idiot. That's what you need to learn to be good at this game. You can grab these minicons from the outside of the, the little houses. Also, sound lag. Let's go. Um, so, we're not, we're not equipping the high gear here yet, but we will. Oh, wait. Are we equipping it? Because you could... Yeah, uh, no, don't equip this. We need it for the fight to survive. Um, look, I've spent a while coming here. I wasn't really that fast, so these enemies are just kind of everywhere. And here comes another drop, so I'm just gonna freaking run. Uh, yeah, these house minicons, you can just grab them from the outside like this. Uh, grab this one. Okay, I haven't really articulated, because there's so many enemies, I haven't really articulated well where these minicons are. By the way, we're equipping this, the auto repair. That's called the build up, yeah. Um, okay, so the build up is in, uh, so if you count this house, and then you count two houses later, this one right here, that's where the build up is. Make sure, don't activate Starscream too early, we're grabbing the Spark Jump. We're not using it though. Although, Spark Jump usage is up to personal preference, honestly. Like, whatever you want to use for this Starscream fight, just equip it, pretty much. So, we're gonna send this to HQ because I'm using the Fire Fight. Uh, Starscream doesn't have a quick kill, but just make sure you do a quick fight, basically. His loading zone's about there. Alright, so basically... As he's slashing his sword, you can always ragdoll him, which is really useful. Like that. That's how you do it properly. And that allows you to get some pretty free shots on him. 
the firefight full blast shot doesn't ragdoll him. When he does that, you gotta get him out, out the air really fast. Good luck with that. Come back here, mate. Nope. When he's near the buildings, he'll always go back into the air, which is really annoying. In case that ever happens. But yeah, basically, you just want to get him out of the air as possible. As much as possible, sorry. He actually got in the air pretty early. He always seems to do it at certain intervals of health. But if you have, like, double missile charge and a full firefight shot, he should get out, like, immediately. So let's wait till he dive bombs me, which could take a while. And this is why this fight goes slowly if you do it badly. Or, like, if you're unlucky. So there we go. As long as you have good aim, you can get him out of the ground. And look how much damage we did. He is, we he is a weakling. You can just tank his sword slots if you really want to. And he most of the time won't block it, but he can, I guess. Okay, that was dumb. I really should have hit him there. Also, by now all the enemies should have started aggroing on you, but I killed most of them. There's still a couple though. You can just dodge their bullets while you're waiting for ti um, not tidal wave. This guy's not tidal wave, he's a plane. Um, also, when he's low on health, just spam it and split there or like when the loading screen appears i kind of i split on the fade out there as well because he has a little death animation see like tidal wave doesn't really have a death animation it kind of instantly fades out so it's kind of bad all right now we're switching to red alert for deep amazon because we don't want to die to cyclonus and also temple skip um so this is where the route can differ depending on what you want to Mm, excuse me, Jesus. What you want to do. Also, always remember that the Autobots never carry over their Minicon loadouts to each other. You always need to re-equip. Never forget that or else you will regret it forever. Alright, so equip the same set that you had for Hotshot. It's just worth using Red Alert here, just trust me. Because he, he's actually defensive enough to tank his own hits. Like, and you'll see why. But if you're using, if you're not going, if you're not doing temple skip, because you can do temple skip or you can not do temple skip. Um, I'll show you the temple skip route and just explain the non-temple skip route. It's basically just going in the temple. But the thing is, alright, let's just explain everything right now. You know what, why not? Um, okay, sit down kids. If you do temple skip, then... Okay, I stuffed that up. If you do Temple Skip, then you will not get the Rangefinder Minicon in the Temple, which is done if you don't do Temple Skip. So the thing about Temple Skip is that if you do it right, it saves a minute and a half over going through the Temple, which is great. However, because we don't get Rangefinder in the Temple, we need to get a backup Minicon. The backup Minicon is done during the backtracking after Deep Amazon. So, I'll show you what that backup minicon is and whether you get it or not. Um, if you don't do temple skip, you don't get this backup. But if you do do temple skip, you have to get the backup. And that backup takes 50 seconds. So, that, therefore, one, th 1 minute 30 minus 50 is 40 seconds. And that's if you do temple skip well, which is rare. You usually take about um, a minute to do temple skip instead of the optimal 35 to 40 seconds. So, that's just a disclaimer. I'll show you which one the backup minicon once we get to collecting it. Because it is currently the slowest minicon, naturally. So just make your way your way down to the, the jungle place. Grab the skirmish. Driving on this bridge can be really finicky. Just be careful, because you can just get randomly hit by collision like that. It's kind of dumb. Alright. So there's just random bits of bark and stuff in the ground here. So make your way over to the temple. We got hit. That sucks. 
but honestly it's fine. Just don't take like a million years worth of damage. They activate deflector here. Those little deceptor clones can pelt you if they feel like it. Oh no. Okay, that was not meant to happen. Uh, never happened to me before though. Interesting. Oh, so you can't jump up that first one, you actually need to climb up. Normal. Deflector's about to run out. If deflector runs out, you can just spam it, and hopefully it works. Block a couple more shots if you absolutely need to. Uh, if you're not confident driving on the temple, don't blame you. Don't drive here though, because you've got that little lip there, it's not really worth it. And this is a fraction of time and it's pretty risky. Driving on the temple at all, that is. You might as well drive to the end of this though. So that was weird. Weird occurrences all around. I'd drive there just to get the untransformed jump. It just saves tiny fractions. You might as well save because at this point it's pretty safe. I, I was thought I was going to fall off because of some dumb glitch there. Okay, normally normally a Deceptor clone comes out of the temple to greet you, but apparently not today. Doesn't like you. Alright. Alright, here comes Temple Skip. If you don't do Temple Skip, go in the temple and grab Rangefinder while you're at it, by the way. Just make sure you do that. Alright, so this is why we have Red Alert, because he has good defense and you'll never die damage boosting. So how do we damage boost effectively? Um, you basically... Jump? You basically... Please don't. Okay, cool. Um, you basically aim down, directly down, like I'm holding my control stick all the way down. You angle a bit to the left or right, and then you jump. You press L1 to jump, and then you press R2 right afterwards, and you should get an effective damage boost like this. Um, worth practicing, although it is a little random. Okay, that's bad. We want to get all these jumps first try. Also, try not to angle too far to the left. I'm still trying to angle as straight as possible on these thin platforms. Go back to the middle. Recuperate yourself mentally if you need. There we go. Now we're on top. Alright, temple skip achieved. Uh, don't worry about this elevator not being there. Because um, it will appear automatically during the fight. You just have to step near it. Also, we're going to grab air burst while we're up here. Air burst early glitch. Let's go. We're not going to use it though. Um, it's just in case that you suck and you can't do later things, um, like me. It's kind of difficult. It's like probably the most difficult thing. Anyway, just get close to it. Don't fall down the hole. I don't think that's even possible. Alright, you don't want him to grab you. That's bad. So let's not have that happen, please. So let's jump down here. I usually like to fight him here. Also, another disclaimer. If you do temple skip, the boss music will not play. So don't freak out. Your disc isn't broken. Um, the boss music won't play if you do temple skip, and you activate it outside of the elevator cutscene. No one knows why, it's pretty weird. Just try and snipe him as much as possible, it's pretty difficult. So, like, maybe just spam it, or maybe use the spark jump. And always jump over his missiles. There, he got in a good position for me to attack him. I like this place because he tends to stand low, but you can just really fight him anywhere. And also, one time during the fight, always, pretty much, he always goes into his Deceptor clone form, just like that. And that is when you can absolutely pelt him by doing the right stuff. So when he punches... Oh, okay, he started his dash attack. Sometimes, usually when he starts that, he keeps doing it. That's weird. Also, I missed again. Also, you can interrupt him. Never rag. You can never ragdoll him, but you can interrupt him. So it's not worth keeping flashbangs. Just pelt him. Also, you can keep him punching you and then fire. That's probably the safest method. Let him punch you and then fire off your shot like that. Once you have a fully charged, obviously. Also, once he's that about down to this level of health, he should go back into helicopter form. Like that. Like, he always tends to do that. But, yeah, when he's in auto- when he's in Decepticlone form, like normal form, 
You can do a lot of damage to him really fast. There we go. He's dead. Alright, cool. So there's this little animation. So on this fade out, I usually like to split like that. And just spam through the cutscene. Because it's a little random when the loading screen appears. Alright, so you see on my split, it says Deep Amazon 13, indicating how many minicons we have. By the way, we're switching back to Hotshot, and we are changing a couple minicons around, so don't just jump into the level all excited. Okay, so, um, so you see my minicon count is at 20 after the split, and that's because we're going to do a bit of, uh, backtracking, actually. So, Firefight is fine, Flashbang's fine, the, we're changing this to the high gear that is pretty much it no that's not pretty much it that is it literally it okay then you just spam because we're going to mid-atlantic first so we're going to grab the glider and then we're gonna head out i'm presuming you have a base knowledge of the game so yeah we're gonna grab slipstream and then we're gonna die so this is where we can employ tactics such as grounded glide boosting there's no mid-air glide boosts yet, unless you really want to. So transform here, untransform over this rock, and dash, there we go. So dashing allows us to get some extra speed, and Hotshot is like just the fastest Autobot for backtracking. We don't need to do any damage boosting, or we shouldn't anyway. You, you might have to. So you should have a dash recharge about now. Untransform, dash. Uh, you should be able to jump on that rock to maintain your momentum to this rock. Yeah, that is pretty dumb how you can do that. You can maintain your dash momentum by s spamming jump on those slopes. Um, it looks pretty stupid. <laughs> this minigun provides you with so this is another unskippable cutscene. Uh, what a drag. Ideal for exploring areas which are otherwise inaccessible. I could already do that. Looks like the Decepticons aren't the only ones who can fly now. I could technically already fly. No, I'm joking, we can't. Um, don't hold your control stick forward too early because then you can accidentally keep it, press the keep build up button. Uh, so, mid-air glide boost over to this water. Well, not mid-air glide boost, god damn it. I, 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 make, I make my own vocabulary and then I can't even follow it. Uh, hit down to go return to HQ once the pause screen will eventually appear. It takes a while. Uh, let's go to Deep Amazon first. Uh, Deep Amazon actually runs on a cycle because of the minicon onto the, on the dropship. Uh, we can carry over these minicons, go back a stage. Okay, if you didn't do, if you didn't do Temple Skip, then you might, and, and you might have got the Anti-Chamber Warp Gate inside the temple. If you did, make sure you, like, switch to the hilltop, and if you didn't, if you did do Temple Skip, then you wouldn't have collected any Warp Gates anyway, so you can just spam it and go to Hilltop. But make sure you don't just go lickety-split into the Antichamber, because that will... Um, you'll have to take another intentional death. Like, you can do it, but it's kind of stupid. Alright, this is cycle-based, so we're going to try and do this fast. And these jumps are a bit difficult, so let's go over here, gain some momentum to jump up this. And let's grab this corner to... never mind, let's go on this corner, jump up there. Uh, grounded glide boost over here, bonk into this wall. Not that wall, the wall above it. We might miss the cycle now. Oh! Okay, that was lucky, we actually stayed on there. Um, yeah, we grabbed the shield wall. And this is where the backup minicon comes into play. This isn't the backup minicon, by the way. Um, it just comes into play later. We got really lucky, don't actually bash into that wall and jump up. That's stupid, don't ever do that. Uh, so we're gonna catch this dropship cycle. If you're too slow, the dropship will just go too far and you'll never be able to get to it. I'm actually gonna slow down strategically a bit, probably. Because I feel like I'm going a bit too speedy for this. Oh, this is tight. Let's just hope you don't get unlucky and fall off just like that. Um, or else the run's over, pretty much. Um, okay, what's the backup here? Um, okay, when, if you're over here... Uh, I've got to invent my own backup because this has never happened before. Mid-air glide boost. Up the temple. Get up there. Perform temple skip again, I guess. Also, the fly guy should be after you in a second. Okay. 
You know, I was just looking at that and then found that strat. Get him out of there. Freaking gorilla. No, he's gonna... <sighs> Stupid. Stop it. Okay, this is quite annoying because... Uh, okay. Alright, just end your life because there's no backup. Um, pretty much. Uh, so just fire up the firefight because this is another thing the firefights are fantastic at. Zoom. Okay, cool. The art of murdering yourself. Alright, cool. So, I've never actually failed that before, which is quite interesting. Alright, let's just show off the entire thing again. Pretend that never happened. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're unlucky and you have too much speed, then the dropship... Like, I almost caught a cycle that was too early. Like, that's how dumb it was. Um, so, jump up here. That was, again, not the intention. Uh, grounded glide boost over here, angle up. Very fast, apparently. So that you can get over here, grab the minicon, and uh, maybe I'll just wait a second so I can catch the correct cycle. If you go too fast, then wait. It's always a learning experience. Um, yeah, so hopefully I don't fail this again, because I shouldn't, because I never do. Um, that's not even a lie, by the way. See, that should happen. Um... Grab the, uh, um, the, the, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Oh, damn it. What is this thing called? The twister. Don't attach it. That's stupid. Um, okay. Once you're about aligned with the temple, sort of about there, do a glide boost and start gliding towards the temple. Ideally, you get on the temple roof, but it is very difficult to do. We got unlucky. Alright, let's just do temple skip again. Uh, just real quick. Just like 3, 2, 1, a boom. Hopefully that works. There we go. Okay. It's kind of finicky. Just just try to not die. Don't fall down that hole. It's really bad. Uh, glide boost over here. To the covert. And this is where the backup minicon comes into play. Uh, you can, uh, kill yourself right on this rock if you got the rangefinder in the temple. But if you didn't get the rangefinder in the temple, we're gonna go grab the, uh, the knockdown in the jungle village right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna charge up our dash. We're gonna do a little bit of a glide boost over here. Okay, that didn't work. Let's just do a mid-air one. That works too. That was actually a pretty bad mid-air one, so hopefully this actually makes it. It should. It's not like a tight thing or anything. Alright, so try to optimize speed with the glider, but try not to, like, not drop too hard. Also, if you take a lot of damage before coming here, that's fine. Because if you're, you, if you're low on health enough, you won't go back through the warp gate. Because sometimes if you're too full on health and you can't, um, you know, end the life fast enough. I want to avoid the phrase, kill yourself. Because, you know, some people are sensitive, but, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, if you have too much health like I do now, just go through the warp gate, why not? So these guys murder you pretty fast, so maybe don't go through the warp gate. But if you're ragdolled, they won't actually do any damage to you. And we're going to backtrack to one more level for a couple. Two minicons. So again, you shouldn't have equipped anything. Did I... Did I get it? Like, did I actually get it then? Or did I just ignore it? Am I dumb? Did I not get it? Did I just fly over there and quit? No, I got it. Okay. Okay, I'm an idiot. I just wasn't concentrating. Okay. Uh, scroll back twice. Go to Amazon. You can spam it because you must have collected the mountain run. If you didn't, the run is dead. Um, and you only realize then. Like, it's literally, if you don't collect the mountain run warp gate, it's like 20 minutes and then you realize that you failed. You can do Amazon or Deep Amazon in any order, by the way. It doesn't really matter. Alright, we're going to be getting the Hailstorm on the mountain, which is pretty finicky because of the heavy unit. But there is a consistent strategy, hopefully. Hopefully soon. If the heavy unit is about in the middle of the mountain, 
then you can actually just fly into him and it should work. You should just ragdoll. And you want him to see you because you want him to stamp. You want him to come towards you and stamp as you ragdoll, which won't affect um, where you are. He'll probably try to move away from you. Just spam X like it's your um, last dying wish to spam X. Just spam the hell out of it to make sure you get this minicon as fast as possible before he stamps you off again. Uh, you don't even have to do a glide boost for this. It's probably better if you don't because you lose control easily. But grab this minicon. I'm going to hit the tree. Oh my god, no. Jump. Ha, <laughs> we avoided it. That's actually bad. Um, <laughs> uh, grab the twister. Or the tractor, whatever this thing is. Um, and, yeah, this is definitely the tractor. I'm an idiot. Okay. Um, send to HQ. And I didn't mean to send the hailstorm to HQ. I meant to equip it. Uh, that's bad. Also, I took no damage from that, because I'm dumb. Alright, let's just end the life now. So, Amazon's pretty easy, other than the mountain. You can... A lot of bad things can happen there. Make sure you don't, uh, not return to HQ. And prepare to split. Split now. There you go. And this run is probably about 15 seconds... 15 minutes slower than I want it to be, because... I've been explaining stuff. Alright, minicons. Uh, to prepare for, um, what's it called? Mid-Atlantic. Okay. There are four different strategies for Mid-Atlantic. Number one is this with Hotshot. This same combo with Red Alert, which I haven't tested. Um, um, unequipping that. And that, or like this in Skirmish if you really want to, um, with Hotshot, but never do that. That is a terrible idea. Why would you even bother? Or, um, yeah, that with Hotshot. I mean, um, Red Alert. Not this. This is obviously an overload. Um, this with Red Alert can work, as th that is probably the safest strategy. In terms of actually preparing for the fight. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with the non-safest strat. And then switch to the safest strat. Always remembering that. Things will not. Um, Minicon loadouts will not transfer between Autobots. And you have to reset them. So I'm going to go in with this. And then I'm going to switch to the red alert combo. At the engine room warp gate. Or well, not the engine room. That's Starship. Uh, the control room warp gate. Um, so just spam, go to Mid-Atlantic and spam it. Uh, here we go. Two minutes of menuing done, that's pretty nice. And, uh, let's go. There'll be an opening cutscene, I- th Oh wait, will there be? Because we already went here. Uh, let's see if there's an opening cutscene that we have to spam through. Mm oh wait, we just have to spam through that anyway. So whatever. Walk up here. Jump on this. Forgot that is not the strat. You must go over here. Uh, walk up this little seam. Jump there. Jump, 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 jump all around. And we are going to dash glide over here. That was actually a bad dash glide. I'm gonna go for some greedy little speed right here. Here. The rock face is too finicky to drive up. Just don't bother. Uh, once again, ignore Optimist. He did Optimist. <laughs> Optimistic. Optimistic Autobot. Optimist. A more positive version of Optimus Prime. No, no, no. Just ignore Optimus because he's an idiot. Or something. I don't know why. Dry fly over. If you have the dash, fly over to here. Um, and now we're going to do texture clip. Or mid Atlantic texture clip anyway. It's not like a specific glitch, it's kind of just an- uh, it's a, almost like an anomaly in this- it only exists in this level. Like, there's been no others found, which is kind of weird. Alright, see this little dip here? Also, by the way, 
if you're doing any strat without the dash minicon, go up this and just go around and, like, finish the level intentionally. You're just skipping some elevator crap. Also, I aggroed those guys, which is quite the annoyance. So I'm gonna do this fast and explain it afterwards. Um, hopefully I get it. There we go. Alright. So, just hold right, hold left and dash. That's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> oh, that was bad. Yeah, pretty much just hold left and dash. Also, you need for these switches, you need to be facing towards them. Just remember that, I guess. That time, I was basically the maximum I could have been facing away from the switch to actually be able to press it. I'm surprised that worked, to be honest, because I was kind of not really conscious of the fact I was not doing it properly. Gorilla Man is dead. They're gonna throw grenades, just make sure to avoid them. I'm gonna activate the control room warp gate so we're safe for Tidal Wave, just to save the strat. Alright, so the safe strat that I like to do is go back to red alert and go in with the safe combo. Going in with the safe combo initially makes you lose a ton of health, you can actually die really easily. Like, it's it's safe for tidal wave because you're using the ballistic shield. So switch this to the, uh, to the, uh, this. Switch this to the, go back to the right, because it's faster, hailstorm. And then press square on firefight and then go in, because you have the build up. So then we ha we can spam because we have engine room. So that's my safe strat. Um, keep in mind with red alert, you're not going in with auto repair if you're going in initially because you need the um, the slipstream equipped. And if you're going in with hotshot ballistic, you're dumb. Uh, that's about it. Uh, if you're going in with red alert dash strats, I've never tried that. It could pro it's probably faster, but hotshot dash strats is definitely the fastest. Um, also, consider the fact that the, um, the fact that, um, using the Hailstorm, while, while using the Ballistic Shield, allows you to pro more probably get off better shots on Tidal Wave. We've established a remote connection for the warship. Um, because you're able to just stand there and tank all of his missiles, and honestly, his Energon bullets don't do anything, so don't worry about it. You can drive up to the control room. Also, if someone wants to clip in this room from the outside, that'd be great. I've been trying, but it hasn't worked yet. Uh, let's go here. And that's the loading zone. So, loading screen because it's a different level. Level map. All that jazz. Okay. Can't my, it's not set myself to do not disturb. Maybe I'll do that now. Ah, uh, spam through this. You can spam through it much earlier, I just wasn't spamming. Alright, Tidal Wave. Uh, doesn't really have a strat, just kind of get in a position where he won't move anymore. Like, stand completely still, aim up at him, and just use the Ballistic Shield. Like, you'll hear this sound when you use it. Because you can't visually see it, which is really dumb. Uh, I like to stand below this rock, because sometimes he can stop early, and then you can't even hit him. Because then we come up when he comes closer, so then he's encouraged to stop. It's kind of like if you stand as close as you possibly can, he'll tend to stop, except he isn't. He likes to come over this way. And maybe do a little bit of a finger wag, where we can shoot him with our blaster, get some extra damage in. So we've already got a ton of damage in, because we've already got... Alright, so there I just activated the ballistic shield. Also, he likes to move a lot when he's high on health, but when he gets lower, he'll stop moving a ton. So what we're going to do is we're going to move back to encourage him to come back this way. It's kind of a little bit of manipulation you can do. He likes to spin around a lot. Don't be disheartened by the fact he's giving you extra cycles or something. Also, he likes to stop back here for some reason, because he's bad. Uh, he's he's going to come back here anyway, there's no point moving. Just if you do the fight a lot, you'll begin to understand why Tidal Wave moves places. 
But sometimes there are random anomalies where he just moves somewhere that's completely stupid. Anyway, yeah, you can just... Ballistic Shield's pretty OP for this fight. You can pretty much just ignore all the damage. It's pretty cool. Wow, he's doing another face. Face thing. Another finger wag. Look, check that out. Wagging the finger. He's like, no, no, no. You don't get to do that. Tidal Wave's pretty cool like that. Also, gone down to half health already, so he's pretty much going crazy. Hit, hit. Yes. Okay, that was lucky. See, now that he's low on health, like he's halfway, he pretty much just stands there and fires fast missiles. Though apparently I'm out of his crosshair now. Although, he, end up, he ends up firing so much that you can't even see him anymore because there's so much smoke. There we go. So this is the advantage of the ballistic shield. You can just stay still and have no risk of dying. It's great. Also, he gets more erratic with his patterns. If you notice when he goes to shoot, he will stay... He'll get more erratic with his patterns. Another cycle! This is super lucky. This is a great tidal wave fight, oh my god. Okay, we can't hit him anymore. Okay, he'll move up. As you can see, he's so low on health that he's getting super fast with his missiles. And sometimes he'll stutter a bit, like he'll go up to shoot and then he won't. Like when he's really late in the fight. We can shoot one more time and he's probably dead. There we go. That was like a really good tidal wave fight. That was like god. Oh my god. <laughs> so that's basically what the perfect tidal wave looks like. And nice that we got to show that. Alright, now we're switching to hotshot again. We need to switch to hotshot for this. This is not an option. You need hotshot for Amazon and Antarctica. You absolutely need Hotshot for Antarctica because of the initial, the second hardest card jump in the game, as I described it. Because that card jump is hard when you don't know what you're doing. Um, so, yeah, switch to Hotshot. I already did that. Ah, uh, he should have Dash Minicon. So, yep, this is the loadout you want to go with. So if you're doing my exact strats, you can just spam this, but you need to switch him to whatever you're doing, depending on your mid-Atlantic strat. I'm just doing that for safety. The fastest strat is to just roll with Hotshot for the Tidal Wave fight. With um, uh, Slipstream, High Gear, uh, Firefight, and um, Hailstorm. Also, can I just... You cannot understate how rare it is for him to um, lean... Like, he, like, Tidal Wave does that lean-in thing. And if he's close enough, it allows you to shoot him with the Blaster, your R1. Because R1s all have the same range, except for the Sniper Rifle. Um, it allows you to shoot him with the R1. Can I just, uh, can I, like, he usually does the finger wag once, but three times in one fight, that is rare. That's super rare. Try and dash past these guys. Try and take... What? Oh my god. Physical interruption. That is rare. That is super rare. I've never seen that. Physical interruption from these, um... I like to call them the roly-polies because they roll around. I don't know. Um, probably the name I had him as a small child. Um, has stuck since... Into my teenage years. Pretty nice. Um, what we're going to do... Is we're going to do a grounded glide boost right here. That was actually the worst possible grounded glide boost. Commonly happens on that slope for some reason. Not sure why. Okay. So this is pretty bad, but you know what? We can live with it. I'm just going to try and recover here. I'll explain what I'm doing right now because we'll be doing it purposely later. So it's actually kind of good timing that this is happening. Alright, so if you've failed this, then the backup is to go here, 
do a grounded glide boost back up to this boss. You need to have pretty good control to be able to do that well. Um, so just take your time here. And that was bad again. Why? Why was that bad? I'm confused. That's normally... That shouldn't have been this uh, low momentum, but sure. Also, you can jump up here. Um, I'll explain what that is later. Because we're going to be doing it, like, on purpose, like, consciously. Uh, just make sure... Just don't get unlucky with them grenading you there. Um, uh, we're going to get the Discord. My favorite social media right now. Um, frick, don't do that. Uh, sometimes if you hold it down for too long, it will just go back to the other one. Which is kind of stupid. See, that's like a perfect glide boost. You can untransform glide boost, where you untransform off a ledge, you dash, and then you glide. But it's too inconsistent, honestly. Yeah, it seems glide boosting in that spot just sucks. Don't know why. But yeah, anyway, there's a backup, so it's fine. Um, glide boost here, just to go over these enemies. Make sure they don't nade you in midair, because that can happen. You can go under or over it. Unders with style, like that. Um, if I do something cool, I'll just make up a name for it, and then tell you to do it, even though it's like impossible and super rare. Untransform jump to get the high jump. But do not equip it! We are doing cave skip now. And I will sit back to explain what cave skip is, and how to do it, and then I will do it. Alright, so this is another sit down kids moment, because we're going to explain what cave skip is. What we're going to do is we're going to align ourselves in a certain spot on the mountain, we're going to do a grounded glide boost, and get as high up the mountain as possible. Then we're going to press, because of the surface of the mountain, and the fact that it's not just a wall, and that the, 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 um, the, the steepness, the gradient of the slope of the mountain, because of it, it allows us to press X to land from our glider onto it. Okay, but naturally it's a slope, so we're going to come sliding down it. So what we want to do is what we're going to do is we're going to press L1 to jump away from the mountain. We're going to press L1 to fly back into it and then spam X as fast as possible to land as soon as possible. So we're triggering the glider and then we're triggering the landing sequence. And, and on certain slopes, this landing sequence, um, while, because we started our glider, so we're naturally going to be, um, immediately pushing forward with our momentum, it pushes us up the slope, and we do this, um, special sliding animation where we kind of slide up the slope. And we're going to do this until we reach a solid part of the slope, so we're going to align ourselves between these two trees, dash glide, get as high as possible, and now I'm going to land. And now I'm going to, what I'm doing is I'm pressing... I'm pressing um, L1 to jump away from the mountain, and then I'm pressing L1 to glide again, and then I'm pressing L1, and then I'm pressing, um, I'm spamming square as soon as I press L1 again, to land as soon as possible, and as you can see on certain slopes, that will make you ride up them. And we want to get to this seam right here, oh no. Okay, there we go, that's good that we ragdolled because we want to get on this exact seam. See? We're solid here. Alright, now, we're gonna jump, glide, angle up, do a mid-air glide boost, and angle up right. And we should make it. It's very difficult. Make sure you- make sure you collect the warp gate for safety, because it is not over yet at all. Um, you still got all these guys to kill. Alright. Also, this dropship sometimes comes in if you're too slow. We might die to them, actually. That'd be pretty stupid. Um, never dash glide across the mountain, it's too risky, because you could get naded off, and it loses quite a bit of time, but make sure you get that warp gate. So, I hope I explained that well in the heat of the moment. Basically, to jump off there, you can't do a grounded glide boost, it does not give you enough momentum ever. Always do the mid-air glide boost. So, that, and make sure, because the reason the mid-air glide boost works is because you're angling up to get the extra, as much height as possible out of your glider, and then doing the mid-air glide boost. So that's where the mid-air glide boost, that's the only part of the game where the mid-air glide boost is absolutely essential. And that was a mistake. I told you it wasn't over yet. Uh, let's just end the life and I'll show you how to do the rest of it because obviously there's still some more jump transform glitching to do. 
There's still some more jump transform glitching to do, so continue. Ah, uh, this guy should still be here. You can just hopefully throw him off the cliff. I think he just fell off the cliff. That's cool. Yep, heard the sound of him dying there. <laughs> I love shit killing them. It's fun. He's dead. You can shoot the wall on the right and it usually hits them. Oh god, that ledge is the bane of my existence, apparently. Uh, kill him. Get this. You can not... You can jump up this, actually, but... Just car jump to be safe. If I fall off now, I will scream. Ah! Uh, okay, I hope this doesn't take forever. Because if it does take forever, then I'll feel depressed. Because I just want to be able to make a tutorial video without sucking. So basically, um... Cave skip is not that easy to do. But the aftermath of it is actually even harder, in my opinion. Because you got to do some precise mountain climbing. Cool, he gone. Um, so I'll just show you. So just take this part really slow. Just be very careful because it's not worth losing a run to this trick. I've lost way too many to this. It's so stupid. Um, but yeah, the glide boosting is the best way to do it. Um, so I hope that my tutorial went well, and it sounded coherent. We're gonna hopefully not get needed by these two guys. They've actually jumped down together, haven't they? Is there another guy here? No. Alright, this one we're gonna car jump up of. This one we're gonna car jump up. Oop. Like, the car jumping can go so wrong, you can just fly down the mountain. It's pretty dumb. That was a perfect car jump. Like, if you want to watch that back, because I'm pretty sure that was the frame perfect. Like, that was the first possible frame you could have done it, and that's obviously the best frame. That was, again, a frame perfect one. Except this car jump is the hardest in the game. You have to hit the inside of this specific seam um, when you land, and it's so hard to do that you almost need to do a bad car jump like this on purpose. It's so terrible, and I hate it, which is why we're going to damage boost over it, because it sucks. Um, and also, the surface is not very intrusive to damage boosting. So this is basically the worst jump in the game, essentially. In my opinion, anyway. I accidentally fat-fingered L2. Never do that, because you could go dashing somewhere where you don't want to be. And if I fail this forever, then I might need to cut, cut the video up. Which will suck, I don't want to do that. Anyway, that was not good enough, apparently. Uh, so let's do it. Uh, you can get up now. Thank you. Let's just do the car jump to show you an example. But it will take me forever. Um, I'll do like five more attempts at it. And if I don't get it... Okay, that was almost what it should look like. That is not what it should look like, but almost up or it's there anyway. That is almost what it should look like. Like, if you just car jump normally up here, you'll just go flying off. Like, it's stupid. Um, yeah, so you can just damage boost on. It's much better. Also, if you don't have a ton of health, though, like, if, if you took a ton of damage from enemies, and you don't have a ton of health, then, um... Yeah, just... I lost my train of thought. If you don't have a ton of health, then try doing the car jump. It's pretty difficult. I'd practice it a lot if I were you. I can't do it consistently. It's stupid. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, honestly. Like, to be completely honest, I have no idea. Anyway, yeah, the shield wall. Not the shield wall, the freaking, um... What's it called? Um... The... Whatchamacallit? I don't even remember what it's called, bro. Ah, uh, don't go in with this, by the way. We're equipping high jump. Um, we're equipping high jump. Deflector. And then these two minicons is personal preference. I like to go skirmish. Just to have the hailstorm equipped. Although, the best strat is probably to keep the firefight and just switch to the flashbang. Because then you get the god, then you get a max health boost, and that's probably the best option. Actually, I forgot to mention that. Or I forgot to even think about that, really. Um, so basically, Starship, uh, 
What's an absolute necessity? Uh, high jump, absolute necessity, deflector. I'm gonna not say absolute necessity because you could go in without it, but if you don't use deflector, you are an absolutely crazy person. Because, um, yeah, there's a bunch of rooms with a bunch of enemies and you're gonna die, so. So yeah, use, um, use the deflector because otherwise you're gonna regret everything. Alright, so, yeah, kickback, that's the mega shield name. It's basically free, so you might as well get it. You can jump to accelerate, I just do that naturally, I guess. Like, jump here to accelerate a bit faster. I don't know if it actually does anything. Kill that guy. Start shielding right now. Miss all these guys. Drive. Untransform, shield. Get past these guys. Unshield about now. Drive into this cutscene. All the elevator cutscenes are super long. Um... So they kind of suck. So after this, I'm gonna pause the game and refill my water. Because it's running out. And you know, anyone needs water to talk for a prolonged period of time. You can't skip this cutscene either, it's just long and boring. So like, you know. Alright, let's pause the game. I'll just be back in a second, I can't be bothered editing this. Alright, sweet. We're back. Um, that only took a second. That's cool. Uh, I don't want to take too long doing that. Alright, here. Lure the sword guy, or the knight, whatever you want to call him, off the elevator as well as you can. If he stays on the elevator, um, you basically earned yourself a death wish, which I just did, so, you know. It's pretty sad, but, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, the first switch, the switches alternate from left to right. This is basically the hardest room in the game, to be honest. Um, the switches alternate from left to right. Hotshot automatically starts facing this, or like, facing the switch, so you can just go left immediately. Activate this. Alright, there's a couple different strats you can do to get through these as fast as possible. Uh, this is the room filled with spy eyes. Start shielding. Actually, this was really bad, I'm gonna stop shielding. Start shielding now. Uh, yep, told you, you're earning yourself a death wish if you bring the sword guy up with you. Because he just mauls you. Also, there's usually a shield grunt here. Sometimes he isn't blocking the way. Stop it! Get out my way, brother. Alright, cool. Um, <laughs> activate this switch. I'm getting pretty passionate now. Um, he didn't die. God damn it. He's still following me. And sometimes the shield grunts are such pieces of crap that they just stay in front of the switches and you can't activate them. It's so annoying. Ah! Okay, uh, there's one more room. Also, those, um, gorilla guys, they suck as well. Um, everyone pretty much sucks, and I hate everything. So if you make it through here alive, then you're pretty lucky. Looks like I'm pretty lucky, and I'm still probably gonna die, to be honest. Um, so yeah, that sword guy, that knight, that sarge, whatever you want to call him, he is a doozy, basically. So yeah, that room, mm, one of the hardest rooms in the game, to be honest. Uh, also, the aftershock's up there, don't grab it. Hit the switch. Crash the starship, spam the button. Report. Do you copy? Roger that. Gotcha. Alright, jump up here and grab the aftershock. It's way quicker to grab it after you crash the starship, because it's a pretty free minicon once you do that. Also, there's a couple guys guarding it, and you're most likely going to be on like 1 HP. Or one bar of health when you go there where those guys are guarding it so grab the aftershock jump up here jump on this jump up uh nope this is not the right way <laughs> follow the data cons is the key basically um jump up here jump 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 straight turn around uh can you skip this is this the one you can skip i forgot I don't remember. I think this is the one you can skip. 
Anyway. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's cool. Um. Wait. Actually, you're gonna make me do everything again? Really? I thought if you crash the starship, it automatically saves your position there. Really? Wow. I didn't know this. Alright, don't die there, because you'll die. Um, that's about it. Alright, cool. Uh, so I guess we're doing this again. Maybe I'll cut it at this point then. Because that sucks. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, so it kind of saved the game, but it didn't. Okay, that's stupid. Um, yeah, don't die after you've um, already completed the level. Pretty much. Look at this switch there, Jesus. Well, alright. <laughs> Don't die. That's the split name, that's the, that's the, that's the way. Alright. So all these doors opened? Like, I wonder. Maybe all these doors are open now. Nope, we still have to open them. Are there any enemies in there? No? Hmm. Oh no, there, there, there are. Yeah, anyway, on the elevator up here, it's better to get none of the enemies on, especially the, uh, the knight. Also, make sure you deactivate right as you hit these switches. Although, I don't even know if that does anything. Just do it. Make sure you jump as he stamps, because it's pretty much guaranteed to stamp in this, um, area. They're likely to EMP you. Get out of here. Get out of my way, buddy. Well, this is stupid. Alright, that's like three minutes of my life gone. Alright, cool. I guess I'll put that in the description when you get to 107. Skip to 110. Robot, report. Do you copy? Rip. Roger that. A hundred percent. So let's see if the starship never bloody crashed. What the heck? All right, let's go through the actual route. You can not skip any of these as of yet. Not that I remember anyway. I thought you could skip one. Maybe I'm an idiot. Look at it. That lucky this wasn't an actual run because I'd feel sad. All right. Also, once you reach the end of Crashed, you may want to uh, warp out and warp back in you want to heal for Starscream because like don't underestimate Starscream you can die like just putting it out there all right now we make this jump This elevator cutscene is still as long as it is normally, which is stupid, like... Why is it so long? Just close the door while I'm vibing, like, damn. Okay. Go over here to the... Like, if you're facing towards this way, go to the right. Um, go through here. Jump into this seam, go on the high a bit, jump into the middle, and then jump into the middle again. Uh, activate this switch. Uh, 
Alright, now we navigate through the dropships. You're going to be facing backwards coming through here. So hold left to like recorrect or hold right, whatever you want. Left is faster. Uh, jump through here. Jump, jump, jump. Don't fall down. It's easier to fall on the second dropship. Jump through this. Uh, jump up. I'm basically taking you through the intended route. So like if you already know how to do this, then don't bother. Um, ah, that was weird. Okay, uh, don't question it. Um, cool. So go up here. Go around here. Go under this. Jump here over this gap. Failed that. Cool. Ah, uh, this is the easiest dropship to fail. This parkour. Just make sure you don't underestimate anything. Again, jump on the left before jumping up there. Uh, this slope right here is kind of stupid and can interrupt you sometimes. In, like, you can almost use transforming as a down warp method. Ignore Optimus as always. Car jumping for some reason. Alright, cool. I'm gonna reset my health for Starscream, and you can also equip the Hailstorm if you want to do some extra menuing. But I just stick with this loadout, it's honestly fine for this battle, because he'll probably dodge most of the Hailstorm shots anyway, because you're really using the shots to just interrupt him. So, he gains, Starscream gains a new attack, which sucks. Um, I'm actually gonna equip the auto repair just to make sure I don't die and have the most health possible. Um, so, uh, Starscream sucks because he has this extra attack and when he gets low enough on health, he'll start dodging your missiles to um, bring him out of the ground because he jumps up, he stays positioned in midair and charges up a giant like laser that you cannot dodge no matter how hard you try. Um, unless you like hide behind a rock or something. Um, but he starts dodging your missiles, and fully charged firefight shots do not ragdoll him in that, um, position, which is really strange. Starscream's back. What's up, buddy? Mi we missed you. See, this is the shot. He's on full health, so he won't dodge it, but sometimes he dashes out the way. Ah, oh, that sucks. Yeah, I forgot about that. So, he dashes, he, he gets up from, like, a ragdoll really fast like this, and then just immediately moves, like, you'll never be able to, also, I'm really dumb, and I'm taking a lot of damage, and at this rate, I will die very quickly, I missed, looks like Starscream likes to mess with me today, so he has a lot, a bit more defense, if you just shoot at him straight, he'll block it in this, in this fight as well, so you gotta wait for his sword slashes, before you can ragdoll him like that. Like, see, he'll block it. I was just trying to show an example of that. I totally wasn't trying to kill him. Alright, die, please. Damn it, that sucks that I missed. Now he's gonna take way more shots to come down. So yeah, Starscream 2 is a little bit... Because... He basically hates you more. Like... That's the only way I can describe it, honestly. Come on, dive at me. Never mind, he just wants to untransform, cool. Alright, uh... See, he'll start dodging it, probably. Yeah, there you go. So you need two missiles, and eventually you need three, which you don't have, so... That's cool. Oh, I killed myself, okay. Um... That's... Pretty bad. Um... <laughs> I was just trying to make him not block it. Okay. Um, looks like Starship is an absolute disaster in this tutorial, which is which is kind of funny actually. Like I honestly just find this amusing. Um, let's just shoot him from a distance. Why not? Actually blocked it. That's kind of cool. I missed. Oh my god, I missed again. I am really bad at this game. Why am I terrible? Oh my god, please stop. End the suffering. Ragdoll him and then he gets up really fast so you can't shoot him. Like there, what ragdolled him was my firefight shot. I didn't get a good example of how. Just take my word for it, the firefight doesn't ragdoll him. Oh yeah, he sometimes does that. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Slash at me.
There we go. Uh, yeah. Just shoot at him enough. You can actually shoot him in less than the first fight, and he'll still come out of the air, which is kind of weird. Where is he? Can't see through the firefight charging him. Yeah, so that, this is basically the quick kill strat. Just hope, just get close enough so that he never tries his um, mega laser attack, basically. And just keep doing this, and then you'll pretty, kill him pretty fast. And while he's ragdolling, just start charging. See, look, I hit him there, and it didn't interrupt him charging up his mega laser. Which kind of sucks that the firefight doesn't, because then this fight would be much easier. But it isn't because of that. Okay, I didn't do enough damage to him, but he's pretty low. So, we should be able to get him out of the air pretty fast. That's cool. Um, start charging. Hope you hit him, basically. Hope he crashes the game. Well, I suck. Okay. Uh, where did you go? Oh, did he untransform? Is that what I heard? Oh, hi. <laughs> okay. See, he blocks. Um. See you, buddy. And now he's dead. Uh, split. I freaking hate Starship because I suck. <laughs> So that took uh, about 12 minutes longer than it should have for the tutorial base. So, uh, sorry I guess. Um, that's really stupid. I hope this video turns out okay because I am putting a lot of time into this. Um, Alright. Uh, hot shot again for... Uh, oh yeah, you could just use um, Red Alert for Starship if you want to. But I just couldn't be bothered switching, so I just switched up the minicon loadout. Really doesn't matter. Um, slipstream, you want high gear, you want this. This is the combo, okay. You want that exact combo. You want, like, this exactly. Like, you need to copy this. Um, doesn't matter what R1 is, actually. As long as you have flashbang, then you need it. Just trust me. You can't have Hailstorm. You need Flashbang, and you can't have any other minicon. You need Flashbang. Just, just <laughs> basically that. This is a. This is like the first time that you absolutely need a certain combo, or else the game sucks. So that was the God Mid Atlantic, but the like sucky Starship. That Starship basically killed the run. Oh no, we're not world record pace. We were not world record pace for a long time. Um, pretty much after Amazon. Because we lost 4 minutes to explaining things. I've lost about probably 20 minutes to explaining things. And not concentrating, but you know. Just uh, come over here. Screw snipers, who cares about them. Um, come over to the, uh, the coronavirus minicon. And we're going to need this for the Megatron strat. If you want to fight Megatron head on, then go ahead. But there is a strat for Megatron. Not just, it's not really a quick kill per se, but there's a strat. Uh, it's about as fast as you can kill him normally anyway. Plus this minicon's pretty powerful, so we grab it. We're also grabbing the rest of the Pacific minicons, so we'll show the movement for that. Jump around here, do some flips in the air, magic things. I don't know why I said magic, but sure. Uh, grounded glide boost up here, unless you figure out how to climb up this, which I never did as a small child. Uh, the sunshine is coming through my window and I cannot really see properly. Um, come through here, come up this, come over here, walk up here. Okay, that was really lucky. Usually that slope, like there's a couple slopes around that that stops you. Uh, jump over that precisely. Oh no. Okay, that was not that bad. Jump over this over here, maybe? No, I'm wrong. That is not what you do. Because we are not stuck here, but we are pretty screwed now. Um, yes? No, okay. Can we climb up this? Yes, we can. Okay, sweet. 
So if you fall down, you can just do slow climbing. Or you can just get up here again, I guess. Oh god, don't fall all the way down, please. Okay, okay, that can sometimes happen. It's really bad. Alright, aim about here. You more want to aim for that plateau. And dash glide. Perfectly. That was a perfect dash glide. I think. Is it perfect? It looks perfect. Okay. It's a pretty good dash glide. Dodge this bullet. They're surprisingly accurate. Just don't underestimate anything. That's like the, the motto of this game. Stuff is easy, but don't underestimate it ever. Oh, we're gonna go grab the full speed, but we're not gonna equip it because we don't have enough power. Power level to do so. Also, don't spam that, thinking you're gonna send it to HQ, because you can equip it to R2, and that is very bad if you do that. Also, you can't really drive up this hill. It's kind of really finicky. Just, like, dash jump. I like to call that. I don't know. Uh, missile this guy, because why not? He can fall down the mountain and die for whatever we care. Um, don't dash again. We need it for right here. Just dash glide here. Uh, that was a bad dash glide, actually, which is pretty good. Um, going slow there is going fast, for some reason. Um, I'm just, like, the sage, and I'm just inventing words. Like, I am the false prophet. Like, look at me go. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Um, don't drive on that slope, because you'll um, turn this corner thinking there's ground, and then you'll fall off. And I've done that in a run, and it killed it, and it was really sad. Because um, it was, like... It was a pretty good pace. Uh, don't aggro this guy. Never mind. Um, Alright, just kill him, I guess. Because he wants to die. The coronavirus, he cannot resist falling to the corona. Uh, come up here. About... You can go as high as you want, really. You can go up the very top, but you can come around here. Dash glide over this way. That was actually a bad dash glide. This might affect things, actually. Come around this way. And you see this little lip in the rock right as I'm aiming there. That is where you want to get over. And this might be bad because I got a bad dash glide. Also get the volcano warp gate. I forgot to mention that. Glide over this. And you should be in a good position to get the jump start. Uh, you can't go from the like the the uh, vertical level of where the warp gate is. You need to go higher so that you get the extra height to get here. Also if you do a perfect dash glide it will have speed anyway. Alright, uh, you can die for me, thanks. Uh, so the Ruben Beam's pretty good at killing those guys, but it's not necessary. Um, come down here, do a dash glide down here. If you don't feel safe doing a dash glide, because you might go too fast and fall off this, it's very common to do that. Uh, just don't. Like, <laughs> if you don't want to do it, just don't. It's not necessary. Um, so we're going to grab the stronghold here. So this is basically the last movements, and then we're going to show the, the Megatron strat, and then we'll end the um, we'll end the tutorial. And basically, with these strats, you could get world record. And if you're not like if you're new to the game, you probably get sub 130 pretty easily if you don't make too many major mistakes. Because honestly, this game it's not intrusive to little time saves. It's very um, like do or die. So it's kind of like like especially Cave Skip is very do or die. Like, if you die on cave skip, you lose, like, five minutes. So it's mostly, like, if you get cave skip first try, no matter what you do, unless you, like, really stuff up, you're probably getting a sub-130. So just don't die to cave skip, I guess. Um, cool, this is the heavy unit island. Don't aggro them. Keep them off your tail as long as possible. Because these guys suck. So basically, to avoid dying here, go around in this water, keep jumping, maybe dash a little bit. I'm inventing strats on the fly. He has gone wild. Alright. Blow this tank up. Usually takes one or two missiles. And grab the final minicon in the game, the failsafe. I hope I didn't forget any. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I want to thank... Let's do acknowledgements before we enter Megatron. Um, I want to thank Ready City Yeti and New Birdman 27 uh, for the originally pioneering this game. And I also want to thank... Uh, I don't know, that's about, that's about it. They found the initial glitches like infinite glide up, car jump transforming. I sometimes call it car jumping. 
I did not mean to do that. Okay, I'm kind of dumb. Just, um, don't go back to HQ there. Uh, you want to continue. I just did it instinctively. And sometimes you probably will. So what you want to do is remember to get the Volcano Wolf Gate or else uh, you're screwed. Um, and the run is dead. So uh, it's kind of like the Mountain Room Wolf Gate, except you realize immediately that you messed it up. Um, so yeah, just kill yourself. Um, hit continue and you should just end up back here. Don't go back to HQ because you don't need to re-equip stuff. Just go in with this. Alright, here's the Megatron strat and why this game's complete trash. Um, um, here we go. Uh, ignore Optimus, as you always have throughout the whole run. Angle down. And here comes the fight. Spam through this cutscene. Lock on your Corona on him. Let him come close to you. Once he starts shooting his little bullets, come down to this. Okay, he decided to tank himself up. Okay, if he does this, just keep the corona on him, shoot missiles, and jump over all of his um, shots. And if you get hit by a flare, then you're the most unluckiest person ever. Pretty much. Just wait till he untransforms. He usually goes into tank mode first if you try doing the strat, which was to go down the ramp. So now he should come after us. Find one of these uh, ramps, go down it. Uh, go down to about this spot, and then he'll start shooting. He's gonna come closer so that he can get a better shot. And now, he'll stay like this forever, as long as you keep doing this circular motion. Make sure he shoots while you're in about the middle. Um, that is always the best strategy. And just keep the corona locked on him, and he'll slowly die. It's pretty cool. Uh, you cannot shoot flashbang at him for extra damage, unfortunately because it will interrupt his uh, cycle, like he'll stutter for a bit, like um, well, like Cyclonus does when you missile him. He'll stutter for a bit and that will ruin it. So you just gotta keep the corona on him, inflict him with that coronavirus. And uh, yeah, so if you wanna go in with like Hailstorm and Jumpstart and nothing else, then like, and just murder him, like go back to HQ and just kill him. The reason you need the flashbang coming into this level is to open the tank for the failsafe. But if you just want to come in with, if you want to go back to HQ, come in with whatever you want. Then really, it's pretty, um, it's pretty easy. But this strat is relatively free as long as you don't mess it up. You will never leave this position as long as you keep this motion. Um, so that's a pretty nice exploit to just murder. Him. And once he gets down to one HP, you can start missiling him. Like, I'll show you what happens if you missile him actually. Like, see, he stutters there, and since I, actually, that was a bad example, since I fell, because now, um, now I'm dying. <laughs> um, basically, if you fall off, he'll go into tank mode. He won't go into tank mode if you missile there. Make your way up. Okay, he's back. It's cool. He doesn't like going into tank mode when he's, um, low on health. Keep going around, and I'll show you what happens if you missile him. I don't think I hit him, but we'll see what happens. See, he stutters for a bit, and then you lose your, um, like, you lose your pattern, and then you get thrown off. So, that's basically why you can't missile him unless you're, like, super experienced, and you really want to get all the damage in. Then that's what you gotta do. Alright, um, let's go up here, get him out of tank mode. Yeah, see, he does not like going into tank mode when he's, um... Also, he won't do it at the very start, because he'll just slowly walk towards you at the very start. He's only gonna, um, he's only gonna start the... You can only start the cycle while he's shooting his little pellets at you, and he's coming at you fast. There we go, we murdered him. And that's about the end of the tutorial, because Unicron hasn't got a strat, it's basically just, um... It's basically just do whatever, and you'll see we have 30 mini cons unless I messed up, and if I messed up, I'll have to edit in a little note saying which mini con to get, because... <laughs> Power eight. Yeah, we can go to Cybertron, so 
We definitely have 30. Alright, cool. So Cybertron, you just beat Unicron, and then you split, and then you get World Record, and then it's all nice and good. But that is the any percent tutorial. I hope the video recorded fine, because this is an hour and 45 minutes of my life gone. Um, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed um, watching, if you're just watching for kicks, and you made it to the end. Um, if you fast forwarded to the end, uh, can you please go back to where you were watching, because I don't like you people. I'm joking. Um, and if you're watching this for the actual tutorial, then uh, happy running and good luck, because some of the stuff in this game is pretty hard. Uh, practice tr jump transforming in the so specific spots. Practice cave skip a lot. Practice um, Megatron a little bit. Practice the boss fights, because if you underestimate Tidal Wave or Cyclonus, they can just rip you apart if they really feel like it. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on another day.